What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Fluid OS on this device. And here as you are noticing this is the Fluid version 1.4 official build and it says ROM over here as the name and there you can see the Fluid OS logo and we have the device name over here of course and the battery and stuff and all other specifications are listed over here. The good thing is the RAM shows here as 6GB not 5GB like other ROMs. And the Android version is of course based on Android 11 as you are noticing. And here we have the security patch as of right now is April 5th, 2021. The stock kernel here is the immensity kernel and here we have the AC Linux status that is enforcing by default. And you can see the build number and stuff from here. And this particular Fluid OS build is actually the OSS vendor based build and in like downloading, let me actually show you whenever you are downloading there is like some kind of weird you might be having some confusion over here. So as you can see, Rafael is listed over here. So you just tap here. Then it shows this like 11 gapped and then it shows 11 gapless. So make sure you download this 11 gapped one on the top. That is the G apps included version because gapless simply means that that does not include G apps and the gapped means it includes the G apps. And the maintainer's name over here is Alexandru S, it says, and the build date again is 16th April 2021. This is the latest build as of right now. Again, based on OSS vendor, not MIUI vendor. And if you want to flash this ROM card right there and all the important links will be listed in the description box below. Right now, let's just jump into the ROM. By the way, this is how the recent panel looks like and we have the screenshot taking option, then the clear all option and stuff. And from here, we can go into the split screen mode or something if you want to go into the split screen mode. And also there is the pin option and stuff. And talking about the stock launcher, let me actually show you which launcher is this. This is the fluid launcher present by default here. As you are noticing and we have the icon packs changing option in the settings. The notification dots is there and then allow edits and stuff. Then we have the enable grid option, then the add icons to the home screen, etc. Show Google app is there. And from suggestions, of course, you can disable the suggestions from here. Then swipe down gesture is also there. Double tap gesture is also there. That is the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. Works flawlessly. We have the developer option and stuff. Then show icon labels on home screen or the desktop and show icon labels in drawer. You can also disable that. So in this launcher to the left, we get the Google's discover page. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app from here, of course. And I just added this widget as you can see in the home screen, the widgets are working fine. Swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel, like anywhere swiping, you can do that. And double tapping on the home screen makes the phone to sleep. And of course, the fingerprint scan speed is fine from the always on display. Let me show you one more time as you are noticing. And from the lock screen too, it should be fine. Let me show you. So as you are noticing the fingerprint scanner speed over here should be fine from the always on display or even the lock screen. Let me show you one more time and as you can see and it does this kind of animation if you are noticing from the lock screen whenever you are unlocking. Talking about the quick settings panel this is how it looks like and you can edit and add multiple toggles over here. Let me actually show you what toggles that you get. You can edit and add the NFC toggle and stuff won't work in the Indian variant of the Redmi K20 Pro though. And we have more toggles over here. So sound, sync, etc. options are there. Then the data saver and stuff you can get from here. And I have already added a couple of toggles. So let me show you. And of course we have the nightlight and stuff. Everything is working fine like that. And nearby share option is there. Heads up disabling option is there. Always on display option is there. And we have the FPS counter. So that is great. And once you enable that you see the FPS counter over here as you are noticing. Let me actually show you. Okay, so the FPS counter is totally working fine. Also, we have the Android 11 screen recorder that records the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So that works flawlessly. And also we have the battery saver and stuff. And from here, you can go into the battery settings and stuff. But we do not simply have any like reboot toggle or something over here that I cannot simply find in this quick toggle section. This is how the settings panel looks. And over here, we have the fluid customization. This is where you find all the customization of this ROM. So primary color, you can actually change it whenever you are using the dark theme. I have been using it with the pitch black theme over here. And we have the accent color presets and plethora of accent color presets that you get. One plus red and stuff is there. Then the icon shape changing options are there. System theme from here, you can change these kind of like status bar kind of themes. And if you scroll down, we also have the headline and body font changing option. I have been using it with a OnePlus slate and here we also have the lock screen style so you can change it to Samsung colored or something and right now let me just switch to the status bar here we have the clock settings 
and show clock and date option is there so you can simply hide the clock if you want to then you can enable the am pm date etc options then battery style is there you can set it only to portrait circle it is very minimal and we have the show percentage for the battery then show percent inside option is there and double tap to sleep on the status bar is there then if you scroll down we have the data disabled icon then the show 4g instead of lte use old mobile data icons is there then roaming indicator and the status bar like icons are there from here you can enable the headset bluetooth vault d etc icons let me just go into the quick settings here we have the traffic indicator option if you want to enable that and here we also have the vibrate on toggle touch quick setting media player is there right now let me switch to the lock screen here we have the always on display scheduling option and volume rocker wake is there if you want to use that lock screen charging info is there double tap to sleep is there and we have the fod recognizing animation but i'm not really sure if you can change it over here because i simply cannot find the option to actually change this fod recognizing animation you can just turn it on but there is no option to actually change it we have the pocket detection and the fingerprint authentication but we simply do not have any always unlock with the fingerprint scanner yes that i'm missing over here and here we have the extra settings from here you get the playback control then the allow signature spoofing and stuff invert layout option is there then the layout option is also there you can change it i guess then vibrate on call connect and call waiting or disconnect is there so these are the in-call vibrations that you get i don't have a sim card in this device but faulty calling should be working fine here jumping into the battery settings this is how it looks we have the full battery usage from here and the screen on time should be pretty good you can get up to six to seven hours of screen on time here no issues we also have the thermal profile so i i did change some like thermal profiles for some apps and here we have the battery saver adaptive battery and the screen on time shows up over here and 18 watt and 33 watt both fast charging are working fine here let me go into the sounds here is how it looks like you can of course change these kind of stuff and from here let me show you this is how the volume panel looks like and you can expand it just like this and we have the do not disturb live caption etc let me scroll down we have a dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound and vibration and stuff then clear speaker option is there that is cool and we simply do not have any me audio dirac as of right now here Jumping into the display settings, we have the brightness level, the dark theme, the night light, adaptive or auto brightness. Inside styles and wallpapers, you get this kind of like wallpaper over here by default and I have been using this one. You do not get any live wallpaper over here and in the grid option, we have up to 6 by 6 grid option. And screen timeout option is also there, you can set it up to 30 minutes if you want to. Auto rotate screen is there, colors are set to adaptive by default. Let me scroll down, we have the DPI changing option, then the screen saver and inside lock screen, we have the always show time and info, then the show lockdown option and stuff. Again, no option for changing the fingerprint scanner animation over here. And double tap to wake is there, enable blurs option is there, but let me mention that there is no option to enable DC dimming as of right now. Jumping into the system, we do not get any system updater over here. In the gestures, we get the gesture navigation and stuff. And from here, you can customize the gesture bar length, but you cannot customize the like thickness of it and the two button and three button navigation both should be working fine here quickly open camera is there then the prevent ringing and the swipe direct screenshot is actually working fine and you can share edit or delete them from here and adaptive playback is there inside power menu we get the sensitive content and stuff then we have the quick torch too so that works fine and in the power menu let me actually show you you do get the advanced reboot option and you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from here in the front camera settings we have the front camera calibration option so that is good we have the front camera sound effects option you can disable the sounds if you don't like them front camera raise dialog option is there then the camera led option is there the default keyboard here is gboard but the disappointing thing is the stock camera here pretty much because this is the like google camera that you get and very old kind of google camera i would say yes it takes basic pictures but i don't like it i would rather prefer a google camera go edition as the stock camera here but that is not the case here this is the camera that you get by default but I have installed the camera PX, the Unix version, and those are working fine. I did change some settings. If you want the Google cameras, you can get them from the description box below. Do not worry. You can check out the video for the settings and stuff. And yeah, the Google camera, if you install them, it should be working fine here. Now talking about the daily driving performance over here of this ROM, it should be fine for daily driving and the performance should be really good because this is an OSS vendor based ROM. And you can see from these benchmarks, the like overall UI performance is great. No issues that I have had while daily driving on this ROM. Mostly the performance has been really good so far. Inside security, we have the fingerprint option, then the face unlock option is also there and there is the app locker. And this is how the app locker interface looks and you can lock any particular app just by tapping on this lock icon. And over here, you can hide their notification too when you lock a app. And then we have the authenticate only once feature. So you can use that. And then let me just set up the face unlock. 
So I just completed the setup of the face unlock and right now if I try to use the face unlock so I have to swipe up and as you can see it pops out the front camera and it works flawlessly. Let me try one more time. So yes you have to swipe up to actually use the face unlock. Also as you can see for the app lock you can use the like fingerprint scanner or use the face over here to unlock the app or you can also use your pin and here the app locking like speed over here is super fine the app unlocking i mean so yeah let's talk about the drm info a bit and here i have broken my drm certification that is why it shows l3 but right now the oss vendor based roms has improved a lot and right now they are not breaking sensors so if your device's drm certification is fine it should be l1 for you and it should be intact while you are flashing a oss vendor based rom or even when you are moving from oss vendor to a miui vendor based rom it should be fine right now but earlier there was an issue that is why my DRM info has been broken permanently because I flashed the persist image separately. So yeah that's a different story but right now the DRM info certification should be fine for you guys. Talking about safety net, yes it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So that means you can use any banking apps over here without any issues. So banking apps is not a problem here right out of the box on this fluid OS. And let me actually show you the reboot time over here. So I'll just tap restart right now. Just notice how fast it reboots. So what do I think about this Fluid OS on the Redmi K20 Pro? Well, I would say this is an amazing ROM. If you want a OSS vendor based ROM that performs really good and it has app lock and stuff inbuilt. And of course, the camera is not that great like the stock camera. And as you can see, we are rebooted. So the reboot time has improved a lot and it is amazingly fast over here right now. You can definitely install ANX camera if you want to. You can check out the card right there for the ANX camera flashing guide and that should help over here. And if you want to daily drive with this ROM, you definitely can. The sound quality and stuff over here with the speakers and the earpiece, everything should be fine enough. And vault calling and stuff, everything should be fine here. No issues whatsoever. Fluid OS is still one of the best options that you can get based on OS's vendor for the Redmi K20 Pro. So that's what I think. Let me in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you feel like. And also the Redmi Note 10 Pro's ROS video will be coming shortly. So I'm still testing that. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. And this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.